engage. Welcome to Game News for December 14th, 2013, and ho, ho, ho! It is the season to be jolly, and we're Santa's little helpers for this gift-giving of game drama. I'm Chris, this is Mike. Hello. This is Grover. Dude! So sit back and have some of those milk and cookies you laid out, and discover the craziness of the week. We begin with Holzer, 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 I think there's two of them, that's fine. <laughs> We will begin with Holzer. Holzer and Fistel starting an investigation to EA to see if federal laws are broken during the Battle for Four's extremely fumbled launch mm. with its uh, many servers and glitch-related issues. The law firm, famed for chasing after corporate corruption, has been encouraging EA stock owners who suffered investment losses because of a financially failing game to seek legal counseling. This could spell EA's biggest disaster yet. Uh, it's <laughs> been in the news for a while about the government snooping around on online services since the leaked documents, but even more info has been noted in documents from major news networks They've been looking through them and found that Xbox Live, Second Life, and World of Warcraft all allegedly not only did the government try to snoop through them through the usual means, but also had American and British agents infiltrating them in-game to look for anyone they might be using the services to communicate or move money through for illegal purposes, like terrorism. Okay, all three companies say that they did not allow for any such actions to take place knowingly. If it is true, it was done without their consent. The idea that people are joining World of Warcraft and then misrepresenting themselves is unthinkable. Remember that Fallout 4 teaser website called Survivor 2299? Well, last weekend, Bethesda confirmed the website was a fake and, in fact, did not belong to them. Uh, later in the week, a Reddit thread appeared wherein the creator proceeded to explain himself. He claimed he had a lot of money to blow and is a self-proclaimed evil bastard that was going to upload a fake but fully realized CGI trailer at the end of the countdown that was ticking down to December 11th. Uh, he claims it was all in the attempt to force Bethesda to admit and or show that they were indeed working on a Fallout 4 and 3 Villain on Spike's BGX awards. Now he claims the fake trailer still exists, but doesn't seem to want to release it anymore, at least not in the immediate future. But all is not lost. A few days ago, one of Kotaku's readers recently sent the documents of a casting call for a project called Institute. Kotaku claims to have confirmed the documents are real, and that they include scripts, character descriptions, and several references to Fallout settings and locations. Now, the document also seems to confirm that the game takes place in Boston, at least in part, if not completely. I've been hearing about that Boston for a while, so I guess it's finally happening. And get a Boston irradiated cream pie. <laughs> <laughs> And the auction for 38 Studios' big, huge games property is finally over, and while most of the assets were sold, two notable ones didn't find buyers. One was the rights to the sequels to Kingdom of Amalur, and the other for the unfinished project Copernicus MMO the team was working on when things fell apart after their bankruptcy last year due to an unpaid loan to the state of Rhode Island. And according to a report on Gama Sutra, Terminal Reality has closed down its doors after 20 years of game making. Closed down its doors. Okay. <laughs> this is what I get for adding words. <clears throat> Terminal Reality has closed down after 20 years of game making. The studio was famous for the Blood Rain series, the Ghostbusters game, and Connect Star Wars <laughs> and its infernal engine that it licensed out to other game studios. However, the story is more complicated than this as word came from a longtime employee Jesse Sosa's Facebook page. The main site as well as the infernal engine websites are down for maintenance slash renovations while pointing to the company's Facebook page but sits unupdated since October. The Twitter account unused since March and no one has been able to get a confirmation word of what just happened to the company that is just up and disappeared in the last couple of months, like uh, Roanoke for video games. Great news for Game of Thrones and adventure gaming fans. Ooh. After making Back to the Future, Walking Dead, and recently Fables into adventure gaming icons, Telltale Games now has a deal with HBO for a multi-episode series for them as well. Uh, that wasn't the only new property they picked up, as there will be a Tales from the Borderlands. Um, my biggest complaint? I'm probably going to have to find some crazy workaround to run this stupid thing, as I do with every single Telltale game in existence. Why is that? It just doesn't run. Every Telltale game I buy off of Steam does not run out of the download. I have to find a workaround to get it to go. Maybe it's a Windows 8 thing? It's possible. Because I've had some... No, we are not available now. Please leave... <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's about the message I get when I try to run a Telltale game. <laughs> <laughs> that could not have been more perfect timing. But yeah, onto that statement. GOG.com is starting a 30-day money-back guarantee on all games worldwide. Mm. Meaning if you're having issues with the game running on your system for any reason and they can't fix the issue, you will get a refund. And better yet, if you accidentally bought a game or even changed your mind, as long as you don't download the game after purchase, you have 14 days to return it. Not too shame. You know, I, I want to say that why would you be so stupid, but I I've done that multiple times. It can happen. Yep. There's been a couple of times I almost bought two of something because it was already sitting in my basket and they 
ask you to sign in, you sign in, and now you have two versions. So <laughs> I, could, I could see somebody accidentally doing that, too. Big British retailer Zavi accidentally sent PlayStation Vitas to customers who pre-ordered Tearaway. Mm-hmm. They actually gave them the handheld bundle version instead of just the solo game. <laughs> and, of course, people aren't returning the system, so Zavi is looking to take legal action against them. Mm. As mentioned in the roundtable, Final Fantasy XIV will be performing a 24-hour maintenance on December 16 for the first part of the 2.1 patch that will add numerous changes to the current game system as well as add an expansion pack worth of content free. This is Square Enix's way of thanking the players for making the Final Fantasy XIV version 2 as a complete success. And we do like free. Oh yeah, it's about $50 oh. worth of free. Yeah. <laughs> Are you stoked for Concept's Mighty Number no. 9 but you're still craving some Mega Man love? Ooh. Well, it's not exactly a video game and you won't get Mega Man in a video game unless you're talking about Smash Brothers. But Jasco Games has a Mega Man board game on Kickstarter. Uh, it, it is important to note that this Kickstarter is not to fund the Mega Man board game they've already been working on, but instead to improve the game with updated and more detailed character figurine models and things like extra pack-ins, uh, future expansions, etc. Mm-hmm. In other words, they really love Mega Man and they're wanting to do right by fans and are seeking a bit of extra funding in order to make sure they make it the best that they possibly can. And it's fully also, licensed, so you don't have to worry about you know lawsuit issues like certain right, yeah, can, it, this is Capcom is completely behind it. So yeah. it's also I'm also going to mention here that they've already met the rather low goal of seventy thousand dollars by nearly threefold at the time of this recording. <laughs> And on to some rapid fire, so that includes Nintendo issuing a statement that no, repeat, no date has been set for the new Smash Brothers launch despite a certain leak that wasn't actually a leak. Platinum Games producer is tired of people begging for Bayonetta 2 to appear on other systems, saying he gets it, he gets it, but it's all in Nintendo's hands as they are the game's publisher. Namco continues its strong tradition of Tales RPGs with Tales as Hysteria to be headed to PS3 in Japan next year with a definite release to the rest of the world sometime after that. Minecraft continues its monster sales with a now over 13 million on PC with over 10 million on both mobile and console each. Uh, Google purchased Boston Dynamics. The creators are those crazy human and dog-like robots that are designed for military use you find in videos now and then. Proving even further that Google is trying really, really hard to be Skynet. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, there's Steve Ballmer, who had an interview with ZDNet, where he pulled something of an Al Gore and took credit for the launch of the original Xbox and its success. It may not be fair because the words are easily twisted, but at the end of the day, that's exactly what he said. And that is game news for December 14th, 2013. We'll be attempting to get into some holiday joy for the next few weeks as we take some time off. And provided that Google and Microsoft's changes to their subsidiaries don't have other plans for us, we'll be back after the new year with plenty more to share. So, woo, I'm giving an opportunity for any, any comments anybody might have. Um, <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> So until then, have all sorts of safe and enjoyable holidays. Be responsible with yourself. And until next year, dudes. See you next year. See you guys next year.